Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be with you again. Brad Macbeth from The Simple Plan, and this is The Simple Plan Weekly Live. Today, we're going to have a look at how much you need to be saving in order to retire. And this is actually going to be two weeks because there's really two questions there. The first is, how much money do you have to accumulate? What's the lump sum? What's the big pile you need to accumulate in order to retire comfortably? And then the second question is, well, how much do I need to save in order to accumulate that much? So this week, we're going to look at calculating that lump sum. We're going to show you a tool that's going to help you to do that. And uh, we're going to step through that tool and see what those numbers might look like. So let's get going. I uh, just want to remind you, we're sponsored this week by the Simple Plan community. Uh, we invite you to join. We put tools, tips, tricks, all sorts of great advice in there. People ask questions, we answer your questions, and uh, you have uh, people that you can travel with, like-minded people, a community of people who are looking to do the most with their money and make the most of it and live the financial life that they're looking for, just like you. All right, so uh, as I said, we're gonna take a look at um, what it is that you need to do to retire comfortably. And there are two components to that. One is you have to accumulate a lump sum, a nest egg of money uh, in order to be able to live off that. Now, Canadians say that their number one greatest financial fear is running out of money in retirement. So the big question is how big does that nest egg need to be in order to be able to live comfortably? Uh, which that involves a bunch of factors. We're going to have a look at that. And then the second question, which we're going to look at next week, is how much do I need to be saving starting today in order to accumulate that nest egg? And uh, some people are afraid of this question because they feel it's too late. Uh, it's never too late to start. Uh, others just feel like they can't get control of their money. We've got all sorts of tools and help for that uh, on a different topic. So uh, stick with us and uh, you are going to get very comfortable about what you need to do in order to reach your retirement goals. So let's have a look at exactly what it's going to take. So we're going to look at the tool that we have for you. Let me just pull it up here. Huh. Okie dokie. Here we go. So uh, if you go to this URL, go.getthesimpleplan.com forward slash retirement need, and I'll put that right in the comments for you. If you go there, you can get all uh, signed up or you can uh, get access to this calculator and you're going to be able to do exactly what we're going to step through today. So let's have a look at how this calculator works. So when you go to this page and click on the how much will I need, it will step you through so that you can get to the calculator. This is the calculator here. Uh, it's called Capital Required for Income, also known as that lump sum or nest egg. And so the first thing we have to put in is what province we're in. We'll use uh, Ontario in this case. And uh, we enter our taxable income. Uh, and you get little helpful tips here if you point at the green question marks. Um, so you want to look at what your taxable income is. And you can take that right off your last tax return or your last notice of assessment, that document you get from CRA after you file your taxes. And so we're just going to use the number that's in here, $60,000 in taxable income. In Ontario, that would result in 10623 in tax being paid. And so your after-tax income is 49377 So this tells you how much you're living on today. And so you can ask yourself the question, well, am I going to want more money? Am I going to want less money? Uh, exactly how much money am I going to need? And so if we say, well, I want the same amount of money to live on. And, and bear in mind, when you hit retirement, you're going to have some expenses go down. For example, 
If you're paying a mortgage right now, hopefully your mortgage will be paid off. Uh, you won't be putting aside money for investing, probably, at that point, or at least you won't need to be saving for retirement. Um, if you have excess, of course, you may well be putting money into investing, but uh, you won't be needing to set money aside for retirement savings. Uh, on the other hand, there are other expenses you may have when you hit retirement, such as uh, you, you're going to look to travel. Uh, if you're not working, uh, you may well be spending money. Um, some people have hobbies, uh, pastimes, pursuits, good causes that they focus on that don't cost money. Uh, but for many of us, when we stop going to work, uh, we tend to start spending money, uh, a bit more money casually. So you you do you. You decide how much you think you're going to want in retirement. And so here we're pegging it at about the same amount, $50,000 in after income tax, after tax income need. Now, indexed at, what does this mean? This means this is our projection of what the rate of inflation is going to be. Now, uh, because um, if we say, well, I need $50,000 and my retirement's 25 years away, well, in 25 years, $50,000 is not going to buy the same thing it buys today. So we need to adjust this for inflation. So if, if we're indexing it here, we're going to decide on what we think the inflation rate is going to be. Now, we want, in my opinion, we want to make conservative assumptions. That is, assumptions that give us lots of room for error. So, for example, if I said, well, inflation is going to be 1.5% because it's been running at 1% uh, or 1.5% for the last few years. Well, that may be true, but the long-term level of inflation has been closer to 3.5% or 4 uh, and we're also at a time right now, this is November uh, 2021, we're seeing inflation kick up uh, in a way that it hasn't for many years. So I personally wouldn't go with two, I would go with at least two and a half, maybe even three. Uh, if you want to be really conservative, you can go with four. Um, now generate income for how many years? What this is asking is how many retirement years are you going to have? So let's say you're retiring at age 65. My advice would be to project out to a minimum to age 95. Um, because if you've reached age 65, the median, the median life expectancy, if you've reached age 65, is probably somewhere around 85 years old. Now, that doesn't mean that people typically die at 85. It means half of people that are 65 will die before they're 85. The other half will die after they've reached 85. So um, you may well be in that other half. And if you make it to 85, uh, median life expectancy is something like 93 years old. So I would say you want to generate income to at least age 95. If you want to be conservative again, make it to 100, or if you're really young, make it 105 or something like that, because with medical advancements, we can anticipate people are going to continue to grow in how long they're going to live. So 65, I'm going to go 30 years. Of course, if you're planning to age 95 and you're planning to retire at age 55, you would have to save enough to have income for 40 years. All right, and so this question, deplete capital at the end of 30 years, this is asking the question, uh, do you want to use up all your money? Um, you know, the funny old saying like, uh, you want the last check you write to bounce. So um, do you want to run out of money or are you planning on leaving a legacy? Um, this is really probably only asking the question of whether you're going to diminish the capital, or if you're just going to live off the, the income from the capital. So for most of us, we're going to plan to deplete the capital at the end of our 30 years. And now we have rate of return. Uh, so this is the question of what do we expect our investment rate of return to be? Now, this is a simplified calculator because we would well expect 
that our rate of return on investments might be different before retirement than after retirement or at different phases throughout retirement. When you do a full financial plan, you can actually get into modeling that kind of thing. Now, we do that for clients all the time when we're building them plans. So let's pick a rate of return. Um, you know, if you were expecting maybe you were going to get 8.5% growth in your investments while you're accumulating before retirement uh, and maybe 5% after, maybe we'll split the difference and we'll go with 75 all right, and then we have to determine the, what forms our income is going to come in because they're ta each taxed differently. Interest, uh, which would be things like GICs, um, savings accounts, that kind of thing, and there are other vehicles that are taxed like that, uh, that is calculated at a certain rate. Eligible dividends are calculated at a lower rate and at an even better rate still are capital gains. And just note these three have to add up to 100% because we're mapping out which portion of our investments are going to receive income in which way. I'm going to say that I wouldn't want a third of my investments generating interest returns. Um, so I might only go with, maybe we'll go 15% on that and eligible dividends might be 25. Uh, now, many would consider this an aggressive profile, sorry, and capital gains 60. Maybe we'll go, uh, maybe we'll go 40 here. And that puts us at 45 on the capital gains. So, this is the result. The capital required, so the nest egg that we have to accumulate uh, to generate $50,000 of annual income. Uh, and you'll see the difference here between the indexed and the not indexed. So indexed means we're account accounting for inflation. Uh, we're going to have to accumulate $963,113. Um, so, you know, that's a significant, a significant amount. Uh, now, if, if inflation is lower or our returns are higher, then a lower amount will suffice. But our target would need to be somewhere in the order of close to a million dollars. And uh, depending on the age you are, that may or may not be a difficult target number. And so let's just look a little at how we might change that. Of course, we could change the after-tax income need, but the most, and maybe we can get better rates of return, but the one, uh, so the two things we can absolutely control are how much money we're going to spend and how long we're going to be retired. And we can control how long we're going to be retired by varying the age at which we retire. So this was based on retiring at age 65. Well, what if we decided to continue working until age 69? So in that case, uh, we would need only 26 years to get to age 95. And just let me hit tab here and it will recalculate. So at uh, age 65, we need 963,000. At age 69, we only need 883,000. It's a big difference. And the reason it's a big difference is because we're changing two things. Um, it's going to have a big effect on how much we have to save because we now have more years to for our investments to grow and fewer years of retirement that we have to provide for. So uh, it's one of the big problems with the notion of, oh, I'm going to retire early as our life expectancy stretches out further and further. So for example, if we say that we're uh, going to retire at age 55 and we're planning to uh, provide income for ourselves to age 95, we have 40 years of income to provide. And that is actually longer now than the full-time working life we had. If you went to university, for example, or some kind of post-secondary and didn't start your full-time working life until, let's say, age 22, 
you've only got 33 years until you get to age 55. But then you've got 40 years of retirement. So you not only have to earn the amount you're going to live on from age 22 to age 55, you have to accumulate enough money to live to provide for yourself for an even longer period of time in retirement. You're more than doubling the what I'll call the income burden of those 33 working years. Uh, and bear in mind, you've got to account for taxes in both those periods as well. So the notion of retiring early um, is uh, ambitious and very appealing, but it can be a very big hill to climb. So if you download, or sorry, you log into this calculator, um, you're going to find that you can play with this, figure out all sorts of things. Um, you could decide, for example, that you want to go with 100% capital gains. That's going to have some effect there. You could get a higher rate of return. So as we see the rate of return increase, you know, if you could get 10%, which that's not at all conservative, um, that would, you'd have to be very aggressive to be getting that. Um, you reduce uh, how much you need. Um, deplete. Uh, if you were saying, well, I don't want to deplete the capital, you're going to need a significantly high number, higher number as well. So a calculator like this lets you get a really good feel for um, what your targets might be and how making the decisions about your retirement target uh, will have an effect on the, res on the need to accumulate now. So uh, that gives you a sense of what I'll call phase one. Next week, we're going to look at what is required in order to save the amount, to accumulate that nest egg. How much do you need to be saving and what should you be thinking about with that? So again, uh, go.getthesimpleplan.com forward slash retirement need. That's where you're going to find the calculator. and. Uh, invite you to go there, take a look, check it out, try it out for yourself and figure out what your target number is. We call it your financial independence number. So what's your financial independence number? How much money are you going to need to accumulate in order to be financially independent? Once again, I want to invite you to join the Simple Plan community this week's sponsor. You can find them at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Simple Plan Community. I'm Brad Macbeth. I really appreciate you being with us today and looking forward to being with you again next week at the same time. Uh, next week we're going to look at how much should you be saving now and what are the decisions you need to make around figuring out that number in order to reach the retirement goal you're looking for. All right, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week, and we'll see you in the Simple Plan community.